Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. I'm Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore, and I'm from Eros Coaching. That's right. And um, this show is going to be exciting because I have somebody that I've been looking forward to interview for a really long time, and his name is uh, Kenneth Play. Well, he calls himself Kenneth Play. And um, that's the reason why he calls himself that, because he runs Play Labs. So today's uh, show title is Hack Your Sex Life with Sex Hacker Kenneth Clay. And he has private Play Labs, which are hands-on sex coaching intensives. And he's been receiving a lot of media attention around the world. And I've been following his work for a while. He helps couples with everything from squirting, kink, and communication. On this show, Kenneth will share how he thinks play-by-play sex coaching is the most effective way to help couples experience new pleasure, overcome challenges, and master new techniques. He is an international sex hacker, expert, educator, and a former top fitness professional, private celebrity fitness and sex ed coach. As a sex hacker, he develops and teaches hacks to help people learn new ways to play and overcome challenges in the bedroom. With his accelerated learning approach and playful teaching style, he helps people gain sexual confidence, experience more pleasure, and cultivate greater intimacy in record time. We all want to be really effective in this day and age because we're really busy. So his teaching style has been described as a combination of Tim Ferriss, Martha Stewart, and Bruce Lee. And he co-founded the globally recognized intentional sex positive community, Cacienda Villa. And he's teamed up with Dr. Zen, I can't pronounce her name, um, to work on the sexual... Yes, go on. Dr. Zana. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Okay, never mind. We'll come to her name later. To work on the casual sex project. So he's working on the casual sex project with this doctor whose name I cannot pronounce. And he's been a featured presenter for the Sexual Health Expo at New York University. And his project has been featured in Playboy, New York Magazine, The Huffington Post, Trill List, Refinery29, and Cosmopolitan. He has developed his life to empowering people through sex education, radical sexual self-expression, and community building. His mission is to bring hands-on sex education accessible to the mainstream audience. And you can find Kenneth at KennethPlay.com. Welcome, Kenneth. Thank you for having me on. You said it like I wrote it. (laughs) Thank you. I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. I, I hear okay, a delay so, by any chance, yeah. Oh, yeah, Um, I don't know what I can do about it. Okay. We just have to wing it. Well, it's always live and it's always a challenge. Okay, so um, tell us more about how you got into sex hacking. I, you know, I grew up with a lot of... um sexual insecurity. I think being an Asian American, you know, growing up um, as an immigrant and and also Asian male sexuality being so underrepresented in the USA, I always felt invisible, shy, insecure. And I don't know how I actually end up being a sex educator and a, you know, be a part of the community. But um, that was an area that I really want to change, you know, in my life, you know, how do I change my sex life? And I was lucky in the fitness industry, I learned how to change my body, how to change my fitness life. And I didn't know it was possible to kind of like, you know, hack your way to a better sex life. And, and um, things didn't really, uh, really change until I found the sex positive community in New York. 
and then everything kind of just clicked. So I got to learn from, you know, world class sex educator. I also people who go to a sex party have some amazing things. This, this like evidence based learning. You get to see someone doing something amazing and it works. And I get to learn from them and from Tantra teachers to, to, you know, kink experts. So I was really fortunate to receive education that it was very hands on and very live. And because of my fitness background, I always want to apply what work in the fitness industry into sex education as well. So all this kind of, you know, um, um, happen at the same time. And my business partner, Andrew Sparksfire, who was the founder of Hacienda, wanted to build this uh, sex positive intention community. And that was the time that when my fitness career I was failing, I had to start up. And when it, we have to end that project, I was kind of lost in my life. And, and I decided to try this out. And then it turned out to be something that is really magical. So very grateful for all the help that I received along the way. Wonderful. And it does seem that you're um, making this um, really good, I mean, you're creating really amazing work. I've been following your work for a while. So tell us more, because um, I wasn't clear. Like, I, I knew you were putting out really good work. I didn't know you were running these private play labs. Could you tell us more what happens during one of these labs? Um, the play labs are sort of, you know, like education design. So I believe in the experiential learning model, right, which is, you know, how you teach in fitness or how to improve any skill. So it's broken down into three parts. So 25% in the beginning is sort of a lecture like TED Talk where people get all the intellectual understanding and this very infotainment, you know, uh, persuasive kind of, you know, or delivering the right um, uh, intellectual understanding of the topic. And then I do a 25% live demo with my partner or demo model. So in, just say if I'm talking about squirting, female ejaculation, I will pull out all the research from Dr. Jana on all the available science on squirting and educating some of the basic from the TED Talk and then do a live demo. So my student gets to get to watch. And then their idea of a play lab is that it's like teaching like a yoga class where people get to practice those skills live with their own partners. Mm -hmm. So it's like teaching someone how to ride a bike. You, they do have to get on a bike and they have to learn it. But once they learn how to ride a bike, they cannot forget it. So um, you know, I want to create a comfortable environment where people actually get to try out and learn those skills in a group setting. Mm -hmm. That's really amazing. Uh, so 25% are lecture-like in the front ex with the em explanation. Then you have 25% live mm -hmm. demo. The remaining 50% is the um, try what you have learned uh, kind of approach. Yeah, I, and I think it's really important when it comes to like sex education that you have a space where it's devoted for learning. You know, there's like, you know, there's the learning zone and the performance zone. So the learning zone is that you, is a space where you can make mistake and learn and not in this high stake pressure process. And then performance is that mm. you are doing the things that you're already competent at. And in sex, sometimes we don't have the idea of having a lab or having a time dedicated to be playful and in a space of learning. So I, I want to engineer a a time where it's very intentional to practice a skill and have deliberate practice on a certain thing so you don't feel the pressure to perform and do it right. I always tell my student, I want you to get it on your 10th try on any skill, but most of the time they get it on their third or their fourth, you know, and they feel very good. But if they fail in sex, if they feel like they failed to do it the first time, then they feel like a loser or they feel like they're incompetent. There's too much ego at stake. So that's where the idea of having a lap really comes from. Yeah, it's really good to be uh, in that kind of space and be really encouraging because I do find that uh, I get my clients coming in and saying things like, oh, I'm a loser because I couldn't get it. Other people seem to make it really easy. I look at the porn stars and it seems to be really easy for them. Therefore, I must be not good at sex. So I get what you mean about the need to uh, try something three or four times and then get a hang of things and uh, things get easier for people. Mm -hmm. And the other side is from the fitness industry, like teaching people how to do a squat or a deadlift or a push-up, you know, you want to give them live feedback as they do it. 
which is you know we don't mm. we don't we don't do that in sex so I wanted to try to make it normal that people get coaching and support while the things are happening. You want to teach the skill while the skill is being performed, not before as a concept, you know? So I think the live feedback mm. is the, the best form of learning. For me personally, too, I learn best when I have a, when I have a coach, you know? Um, so mm. I want to so offer I'm very curious respect. how, yeah, I, I really can see the value in that. I, I'm really curious how um, people react to the 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 need to, I guess, uh, be so vulnerable in that space. How do you make sure that that space is uh, safe? So I I, I practice and promote um, enthusiastic consent. So first thing is that my classes is pay what you can model. So people are like you know oh. pay what they can. I have a suggested donation. And also, I'm happy to give people's money back if they don't feel like it's worth their time. So that it takes out all the financial pressure. They could leave at any time if they feel uncomfortable. They don't have to do anything they don't want to do. And I tell them not to peel pressure each other as a partner. So they have in this space where they have complete agency over whether they want to do something or not, and they're encouraged to practice what they want to practice. So, so that's the first thing is that they are feeling safe from the space that I'm creating in their in the play lab. The second thing is that I I want to take out as much anxiety for sex as possible. And you you I mean you when you coach your client, it's the same thing. Anxiety is probably the number one killer, right? So I don't want them to be anxious. I want them to be able to to learn from their mistake and celebrate mistakes. And 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 it's like everything is a learning experience. And it's also the format of the class because the first 25% it's a lecture, so there's nothing really like threatening about listening to a lecture. And then they watch me do it first, so I'm being vulnerable. I'm being half naked, and we're doing the they're showing the skill. And then they're encouraged to stay to practice if they want to, and they could leave at any time. So, but I was very surprised. I didn't know if this model could work. I used to teach this only at like a swinger convention, so um, I learned to do it. You know. Like at a Bushwick, you know, in Bushwick, and it's happening. So it's amazing. Great. Okay. So more with Can I Play after this break. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Welcome back to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meets. We are with Kenneth Play, who is an international sex hacking expert and sex educator. He's a former top fitness professional and private celebrity fitness and, of course, sex, sex ed coach. And uh, he's been in uh, many uh, projects and been featured in the media for his uh, work on his private play labs. So tell us um, more, uh, Kenneth. Uh, you said um, that um, 
in uh, your website that your mission is to help sex ed be as accessible as porn. And I understand that you um, charge about the range of $1,000 for your play labs. So how does that, you feel, uh, fit into that mission of making sex ed accessible? accessible? So they're, they're private one-on-one -on -one play lab, which I devote like three to four hour per a typical private play lab to my client is there, is what I charge the most, which is at $1,000. Um, that enables me to give away a lot of my content for free online. Plus, also, I do my mm. group classes at a pay-what-you-can model. So it has a suggested donation of $69 per play lab. Um, but the private one-on-one -on -one is where time, I don't have infinite amount, right? But my education to leverage yeah. the technology and internet, I could give away for at, at, you know, make most of it for free. So it's a combination of mm. doing those two things. Um, so thank you to my very um, amazing client who could afford and, and who could empower me to do more work for the general public. Mm, that's wonderful. That's that's really great model to do. And um, it's always a challenge for us as educators to find something that allows us to continue doing the work that we do and yet at the same time get paid. So I'm I'm really happy for you that this model works for you. Mm -hmm. Thank, yeah, thanks to my client. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, um, we've heard in recent years uh, people who use terms like hack, you know, like uh, um, hack your life and hack this and hack that. So you call yourself a sex hacker. Um, how do you feel, um, you know, um, the things that you teach um, specifically can help people improve their sex life and to build new skills? You know, my definition of hacking is that not just accepting the default program that comes with your computer and phone. And it's not, and it's also bringing really simple, elegant solutions to complex problems, right? So I look at Tantra and kink as hacks as well. Like Tantra is an amazing practice that help people engage in their experience, to focus on their sensation, to connect with their partner, to connect with their spirituality. So to me is that people have spent so much time to make something so challenging in some way and with this elegant simple solution um same thing with with kinksters when they are creating a scene it it it, it creates this amazing experience of arousal where you can live out your fantasy where you get to you know feel a very high intense sensation that is pleasurable for you and it taps into all your uh, biological system where you have this delicious amount of neurochemical flowing through your body that you feel high, a natural high from your sex. So to me, all those things are hacks and I like to collect the best of this, you know, best hack that is available and then kind of introduce um, those hacks to my audience. And on the Bruce Lee side, I don't particularly subscribe to any style. So I don't believe in any school is better than the other. To me, it's like collect a bunch of useful stuff and share it with my pe share with people that I could reach. Hmm. I really like um, a lot of the things that you are saying. And, uh, what, uh, you know, of all the things that you teach, uh, you mentioned Tanja, Kink. Uh, which ones are you m most passionate about? Uh, I've been teaching a lot of female ejaculation and, and squirting. It's been... I did it for Playboy TV. I, it's been featured quite a bit, and and I have a bunch of uh, free video clips online that I give out, so people could watch me on um, on Pornhub or or I will host it in my private server too because I know like Pornhub is not accessible to to every country. Um, but female ejaculation, ironically enough, is that I don't teach it like a party trick or the ultimate female orgasm. Um, that's a, one of the reasons I partner up with Dr. Jana, where she could provide me with the latest research and the most accurate, you know, science out there. So I could demystify and, and debunk some of the myth about squirting, but also share in this very practical, you know, how to apply those, uh, how to just stimulate the G-spot, what what sensation that, you know, will create this phenomenon. And and when it comes to sex, I think people need to find what's pleasurable for them. So it's just one of the things that people get to try. Mm. 
That's really great. Um, do you have any intention to uh, do any other new like projects? You already have videos. You have um, classes. Um, I don't know. How about um, books? Are you planning to do any upcoming exciting projects? Um, there's a couple of new projects that I'm working on. So I'm um, creating digital play labs, so people could basically um, get receive my play labs, you know, online where I do all the TED Talk like lecture on there. I do all the demonstration and then give them exercise on how to try those things, like how I teach it in a class. And I've been teaching those play lab quite often that I know some of their exercise structure that works. It's actually very similar to fitness with exercise progression. You kind of teach one skill at a time. So I want to be able to offer that online so I could reach more people. And then same thing with my online product. My goal is to put the product out um, that people could purchase. But for the people who want the information and cannot afford it, they could email me and then I could send to people that who cannot afford the price that I, I asked for. My goal as an educator, and I think you, you might identify with that as well, is to reach as many people as possible. I don't think holding back knowledge is the way to go. So the more I get to educate, the better. So I'd rather my content reach 100 million people than to reach 1,000 people, you know? Mm. That's really um, uh, um, fantastic. So you you mentioned um, earlier um, that um, you had a lot of um, body image issues growing up, being Asian. Do you feel that uh, you getting um, discriminated or some stereotypes that you have to work through as an Asian male sex educator? I mean, absolutely, especially being an Asian male. A penis size has always been like the butt of the joke, right? And then you also have this narrative growing up in the U.S. that if you don't have a porn star cock, meaning have a way above average cock, that your penis is not good enough and you cannot satisfy a woman. So growing up with those sexual shame and learning how to overcome it, and it's not overcoming in the sense that the average cock is like, oh, you poor thing, you have an average size penis, and therefore you have to work extra hard at it. It's more like having people understand that their the cock that they have is the most beautiful cock they have, and they will they deserve sexual pleasure. And it's about finding their compatible partner that will enjoy your cock. There is people who really don't enjoy having a gigantic penis, and there's size queen who loves it. So I think taking out those myths about what's good uh, sex is important to me. And if it was true that only size matter, that we have reduced sexuality only to our equipment, our function and performance, right, then you would think that every woman would buy the biggest dildo and she would have the best sex life that she can. And then, as you know, more vibrator being so than any other toy. So, so I think people just need to be better educated. Hmm. That's really great to be able to break through that stereotype and um, be able to represent yourself and to uh, debunk some of these myths. I think it's really important to be able to have that kind of modeling available um, for um, people out there. Thank you. So um, I know that actually is one of the things that I came across um, um, you is actually um, your sex positive community. Um, that was before I knew you were actually also a sex educator. I think you were like the poster person for this community you've created, um, Hacienda Villa. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Hacienda Villa really changed my life in so many ways, and really thanks to my my business partner and my, my best friend in the whole world, Andrew Sparksfire, he's the founder of Hacienda, which is a very basic concept that we celebrate sexual sexuality, sex positive culture is something that is worth spreading, um, and to me, sex positive, it just celebrate um sex is all its form and all its gender, um, all its orientation and expression. Um, and, and Hacienda Villa is a sex-positive intentional community. We have 14 residential members who live here. 
Um, we have an event space called Hacienda Studio where we host different sex educators. From one of ours, both both of us had um, their, their, their privilege to learn from Barbara Corella, so she taught here as well for her Urban Tantra professional training. And I teach here, Dr. Jana teach here. And for us, it's to really promote sex positive culture. And the thing is, what I learned, um, sex positive culture is not something that you preach and it's not a concept to like, like show people. It's more than a TED talk. It has to be a culture that people get to experience. You know, when you're with a community who celebrates sex and takes shame out of sex, then you feel a little bit more liberated because of people. So our goal is to create, you know, to spread this message in a way that other people build community and, and uh, you know, let this be a mainstream culture rather than, you know, the bubble that I live in. And and I and this is sort of a long-winded answer, but I if I had a daughter, I will feel safer to send her to our sex party to explore her sexuality and socialize and to send her to Cancun doing spring break where it's a drunk, you know, there's, you know, bro culture, whereas, you know, people just getting really, you know, intoxicated and drunk where there's no safe for sex supplies culture here and consent is not sort of, you know, it's not practiced and reinforced by the community. So I think the way we have sex party is something that is actually really good to um, to model all over the world because people do socialize over sex. And I think a safer, more way of celebrating it is awesome. Mm, that's really great. So we come back with Kenneth after this break. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Lori Walker. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OMTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in the beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. What's up? This is Brad and Mike from Lincoln Park for Life Beat, the music industry fights AIDS. Listen up, times are tough and you get a lot of things thrown your way. If you're being pressured to have sex and you're not ready, then say no. If you're having sex, be smart and use protection. Respect yourself and protect yourself. For more information, call the National AIDS Hotline at 1-800-342-AIDS or log on to www.lifebeat.org. You are listening to Arrow's Evolution on the Om Times Radio Network, and you can share this show with your friends by going to the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you'll be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. Today, we are with Kenneth Play, and you can find him at kennethplay.com. So far on today's show, we've been talking about how he came to be a sex hacking expert, how he does his play labs, and how he makes sure that uh, the space is safe. It's so important that uh, people have the ability to have enthusiastic consent that he's um, talking about. And he talked about the importance of questioning um, default programming that we have. And his training is a lot about uh, scientific evidence. And uh, so far he also talks about how he overcame some of these uh, Asian stereotypes to do the work that he does. And uh, just before the break, we talked about the sex-positive community that he's part of, Hacienda Villa, 
Uh, is there anything else that you would like to elaborate about um, Hacienda Villa, um, Kenneth? I think more on Hacienda Studio. So, so it's a so Hacienda Studio is part of Hacienda Villa, but our goal is to build a studio where we could um, produce um, some very high quality sex education content. Because our goal is to make sex positive, um, uh, sex education more like as accessible as porn, right? I think having a studio is quite important to not only empower to shoot my content, but to feature some of the world you know, world-class sex educators that we have or any local sex educator that wants to create content because I think the internet is the key to educating more people that's less filtered that way, right? So um, so we, I, so right now I'm having less play lab because I'm, you know, locked down to create more content. Um, I am putting my squirting uh, female ejaculation play lab, that's one that I'm developing, and my partner, Dr. Jana, is creating one on um, how to deal with unwanted attachment from hookups because, you know, there's people who are, you know, are having casual sex, but they always end up breaking their heart. How do you deal with that? Like, what are the signs behind it? So if you want to fall in love, this is what you do. And if you don't want to fall in love every time, this is, you know, some of the practice that backed by science that works. So we want to put those content out there, you know, online. Mm, great. And I'm sure listeners are very interested to find out about the events, workshops that you run at Hacienda Villa. So how can they um, uh, find out about it and where where is Hacienda Villa? Hacienda Villa is right here in Bushwick, Brooklyn, New York. Um, if they go to my website, all the links are there. So there's Hacienda Studio. So it's Hacienda, www.hacienda.studio. Um, and then all my website for the villa is all on my website. There's a calendar for Hacienda Studio. And then obviously I have my own calendar as well. So they can sign up for all the future uh, classes and offering. Um, so also one exciting project that I'm working on with Shana is called the Smarter Sex Project, uh, where we take her human, you know, she teaches human sexuality in NYU. But that's a class on human sexuality rather than your sexuality. So I have um, my expertise in, in experiential learning and, and, and making things, you know, um, that people could apply. So we've been teaming up trying to teach classes where people get to make smarter decisions about their sex life based on their, all the information we have about human sexuality. Um, and there's not a lot of classes that teaches about your sex life. How do you make decision about your sexual health? You know, what are your risk tolerance? What safer sex protocol do you follow? You know, to consent, to um, attachment, to pleasure. Like I want, I want people to be um, as educated as possible on this topic. Mm. That's beautiful. Okay. So on um, on this show, we always explore the link between sex and spirit. Could you um, let us uh, know what is your perspective when it comes to the link between the two? You know, I there is some you know limiting factor because I'm more on the scientific side. However, I have some very profound spiritual experience with sex to tantra, especially when I did my professional training with Barbara. And more than anything, I see it as a way to really ch channel your focus, your attention, and really experience the magic of sex. And instead of doing sex, right, and making sex happen, and she always coached me, that is letting sex do you, which is kind of an incredible thing that, that Tantra, because spirituality that by default, in, in, or the way I look at it is bigger than you. So to totally surrender to the magic of sex and, and that experience is pretty incredible. And I feel like as, as I've been growing and learning as a sex educator, a lot of the things is no longer achieving more external experiences, like having more elaborate sex or having more sex with more people. And let me tell you a little story. I was one time getting a blowjob with four girls at a sex party. And in that moment, I was like, Wow, and the external side looks amazing, right? It's like this <laughs> lifetime achievement thing. But in my, the blowjob was in, in some way mediocre because it's not technically great, but the internal experience 
wasn't amazing too. It was more like sport fucking and more performance. And I realized that a lot of um, a sexual experience, especially when we watch porn, that you just see this performance, but the internal experience of the, of the performer might not be amazing. But and yet that there's some tantra practice looking from the outside it might not look like, you know, like, like a performance, but the internal experience is totally incredible. So I hope my teaching evolve in a way that I get to teach people about having more epic internal experience rather than just having more showy sex. Mm, yeah. So I really appreciate this story because it really clearly explains the difference between the spirituality that is possible in sexuality versus going into performance. Um, how do you personally feel about um, the link between the two? I, I know you already began to say all this. Um, just before the break, uh, just before the show started, you also talked about um, the the mystery of the unknown with spirituality. So I really like um, for you to be able to share that perspective to and listeners out there, if possible. I mean, obviously, I, I love science because working with Dr. Jana, but I don't think science has has have enough time to explain everything and able to measure it. So I definitely have some spiritual experience that I cannot measure or explain yet. But it doesn't mean it's not there, and it doesn't mean that it's it's not real. However, I like things that work. So. I think some of the Tantra practice, if it works, then it's incredible. But sometimes, you know, when, when it comes to, I, I, I really against people making false promises when it comes to sex, because then you end up sending people chasing after a mythical dragon that is not there. But I think there is a lot of, um, a lot of uh, areas that where people could expand their possibility when it comes to sexuality that is on the spiritual side, because it's different, you know, when I teach, you know, when I teach about sex, when it, I'm just breaking down the, the sometimes I'm just breaking down the technique and the practical stuff, right? The internal experience stuff is more of letting go and surrendering. And I've seen kink practitioners do that, and they might not call it spiritual, right? Or well, tantra people experiencing energy sex, you know, they call it spiritual. But I think there's so much more, and, and I'm always humble, by how little that I actually know about sexuality. And and I want to be wrong about sex too, because if I'm wrong, then that means there's more things to learn out there. Same thing with fitness back in the days. Everybody's always have paleo diet is the best, or low carb is the best, or you should lift weight really slow is the best. And I think it's all garbage most of the time. You know, I think it's, it's, it's a way to always trying to learn more and improve something and not over promising something, you know, that's my perspective. And I hope to learn more about spirituality and sex. That's beautiful. I really like your practical approach to learning about sex and very down to earth and being willing to um, admit the things that uh, you are still learning about. And I think that's all we can hope for in an educator, really. A lot of people are just looking for uh, teachers who are just willing to be human and to learn as much as they can and to share what they know. And um, it's really fantastic uh, what you're doing. And I really appreciate what you shared so far about the link between sex and spirit. And again, I, I feel that this is very useful for listeners out there. Um, as you probably know, that um, this radio show is on the Om Times Radio Network, and Om Times Radio has a Om Times magazine. And so a lot of the people that I expect to be listening to this show are people who are into spirituality and self-improvement and a new age. So it's, it's quite a different audience um, than uh, some other podcasts. So I, I really appreciate how practical and accessible you're making it uh, be because I think people who are spiritual don't always see the link with us, um, um, our sexuality. And it's important to um, let it be known that uh, we don't have all the answers and that we can be practical and that um, uh, we can have spiritual experiences through sexual encounters, and I, I really appreciate uh, what you're sharing so far. I mean, to be 
very transparent, some of the most intense, amazing sexual experience I have was on acid. And I think in my own experience on acid really taps into the spiritual side of my, my experience. And I mean, and also acid is created by science, but you tap into this part of your experience that I cannot, like until you have that experience, you didn't know this world exists, right? And then I'm having some of the most profound experience. So there's just so much more to know, you know, and, and it's, it's so profound that you can say that there's, it's not, you know, not real and not there, right? But it's an internal experience. So <laughs> it's just magic, you know? Mm. Yeah. I think a lot of people who are spiritual are actually um, interested in psychedelic drugs because um, they are getting um, um, awakenings and they, they, they feel that they can full time in space and uh, really connect with the universe. And these are experiences that probably meditation itself um, may not be able to attain because um, those um, drugs, I think, help us to really get into a very deep state of surrender. And uh, so yeah. I'm I'm not opposed to it, but in Singapore, it's so completely illegal. Gotcha, yeah. It's not legal in the state, too. Oh, legality. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's great if we can legalize some drugs like marijuana. Um, it's been mm-hmm. reported to be able to support people in having orgasms who are unable to have them. Mm-hmm. So we have a break, and after this break, we'll come back um, to Kenneth Play, and you can find him at kennethplay.com. the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Join me, Tammy Adams, intuitive life coach and spiritual healer, for my new show, Karma Talk. Learn how to get rid of your karma so that you can start living the life you are meant to live. I am not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Join me on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time for Karma Talk on Home Time Radio. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. And we are into the last 15 minutes of today's show. We are with Kenneth Play, and he runs private play labs that are hands-on sex coaching intensives. And he's been receiving a lot of media attention around the world. He helps couples from everything, with everything, from squirting kink and communication. And uh, as we've learned about him uh, through today's show, that he's also part of a sex-positive community called Hacienda Villa. And uh, they have Hacienda Studio that brings to you high-quality sex ed. And he's very proud and has mentioned on today's show, I'm sure that you don't want to miss this, so I'm going to say this, that uh, Kenneth is offering uh, his squirting hack for free. And uh, you can go to his website, Kenneth Play, where you can download his squirting hack, and you can find his videos on Pornhub at pornhub.com. Dot com backslash users backslash Kenneth Play. 
So you will be able to get access to his sex education content. I'm not sure if you know this, but recently, the last few weeks uh, that I read about it, that Palm Hub started putting out uh, sex education um, material as well. And that's very important because we look at porn as if it's reality, but it's not. And it's really important to put good sex education alongside porn so that people have the opportunity and a platform to start learning about sex in positive ways. And I'm so happy that Kenneth's uh, um, programs or videos uh, is on Pornhub. So I just want you to know, actually, um, I'm not sure whether you know this, Kenneth, that actually Pornhub mm -hmm. is uh, banned in Singapore, so it's Playboy. And uh, I'm sure that there are ways around it, but uh, it is banned. <laughs> and uh, Pornhub recently released a, a study um, of uh, their viewers, and apparently one of the top consumers are Malaysian women. <laughs> and uh, Malaysia, as you know, is a Muslim country. And so I'm so happy um, that um, there is access to online porn and sex education in a Muslim country like Malaysia. So happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing something with their um, porn of sex ed program. So it's pornhub.com slash sex. So I made one of their first um, uh, explicit sex um, uh, sex ed video for them. It's Finger Play 101. So it's manual simulation to clit. And I put it on the website already. They're going to launch it on on their blog very soon. So that's a very exciting partnership. And I, I, I'm very honored to be a contributor on it very soon. Um, but I have some questions for you. I'm so curious about the Asian community. And and I recently uh, was teaching in Asia to a a very a travel company, but there's something I, I was interviewed today by a Hong Kong uh, online you know news outlet. So I want to do more work in Asia, and and I just want to hear your perspective on on I, I think it's such a big question, but what is Asian culture like when it regards to sex, and how do you feel as a sex educator to reach more Asian audience? Yeah, thanks for your question. I'm not used to being asked questions on my radio show, but I really appreciate the opportunity uh, for open sharing and discussion. Um, being Asian in Asia, I think what happens is I can have my blind spots too because I I project things onto my own people um, growing up, uh, having a very um, pretty uh, common uh, Asian uh upbringing, which is that uh, you don't ask, you don't tell, you don't ask your parents about sex at all. So you don't talk to your parents about sex. Your parents don't talk to you about sex and you don't see your parents having sex and you don't even hear your parents having sex. And um, I've had clients whose parents tell them um, to stop masturbating or to never masturbate and these good girls and good boys, they really stopped. And so they shut down their sexuality and um, they have no idea how to have sex. And uh, I have a lot of clients who have vaginismus. Vaginismus is a real epidemic here. Um, uh, in case mm. for listeners who don't know, uh, vaginismus is a condition that happens when a woman's vagina shuts down, making penetration difficult or impossible. And um, there's very little sex education at all for my generation. And there is some sex education in schools now. However, it's abstinence-based. And because of the lack of sex education, so teenage pregnancy is pretty common, um, like for instance in the Philippines, and even sex ed is not welcomed. Um, then there's also homosexuality that is illegal in Singapore. And uh, last year there was reports of uh, homosexual uh, people being uh, prosecuted in Indonesia, and it's very worrying. So it feels like one step forward two steps back sometimes and the reality is there's no real good sex educators who have gone through enough training uh, in Asia I find. We have sex therapists and as you know sex therapists really come a lot from um, the mind and it comes from uh, underlying beliefs and all that. Um, not a lot of uh, sex educators in Asia really have a lot of training when it comes to um, sex coaching, like in practical ways. 
I try to be practical in my in my teachings, in my workshops. And uh, what I do is I I do teachings uh, with without the use of nudity. So I would explain using sex toys and all that. And some people really find it challenging to understand because some people just need more explicit instruction. And yet at the same time, as an asex sex educator, I'm not allowed to do nudity. So it is a challenge trying to be as clear as I can be with my clients and yet at the same time respect cultural inhibitions here and also religion. Um, you know, I have clients who are Christians and Muslims and so I really need to be very respectful of where people come from. And because of all these challenges, even no matter how much I put out there, my workshops and events and this and that, I still get challenged uh, with getting clients coming to my workshops. And so I've been doing this for seven years, and no matter what I do, I just have a lot of difficulties trying to get people to fill my workshops. And finally, when I uh, went to Sydney last year and uh, was part of the Really Good Sex Festival and started running workshops there also in October, that's when I realized it's just a total different ball game because the culture is just so different. People are a lot more open in uh, Western countries, I feel. And um, there's a lot of uh, stigma, you know, around sex. It's private. It's supposed to be private. Uh, people would say things like they would die rather than come to my events. It's like admitting that they have something wrong. I'm sure. I'm sure you face that in your work as well, Kenneth. I, I think I'm a little bit, you know, very fortunate that you know New York, Brooklyn is quite progressive in that sense. But I think that instead of fighting cultural norm, I think that's why online is beautiful because people could have the discretion and privacy they want. Then where they get educated is online will be great too. So, and I also work with a lot of sex yeah. therapists and, and professional like yourself that who have a licensing issue with nudity or, or any hands-on work because that's why their collaboration and partnership been very fruitful for me because I could translate what they've been working on in in the therapist's office to the bedroom so and i like their live explicit stuff and the more we could normalize it the more we could talk about it i think it's better so so i hope one yeah. day it become institutionalized but before that happened i just want to make it available online because people will find their way to access it you know especially yeah, I think it's really a lot important. of content is free yeah so I'm I, I'm putting out more videos now answering questions uh, relating to sexuality uh, on my YouTube channel as well. I'm not sure whether you know this. Um, this week is actually National Orgasm Week. It's supposed to be the first week of spring, which is uh, March 20th to 27th. So every day for this week, I have been putting out one video relating to uh, orgasms. And I'm, I'm putting out content, but none of it is um, explicit. And actually what has been very um, illuminating the last two weeks was I got, uh, you know, like people who I never knew were following my work for like years saying, uh, you know, and speaking to me as if they know me and actually I don't know them. And uh, the internet has really opened up a lot of opportunities for people to learn. And I'm so happy that I'm doing this radio show because for for so many years, I'm feeling so isolated as an Asian in Asia, and I have no access to my counterparts. And the, this radio show has allowed me to have the opportunity to speak with uh, my colleagues using technology. And uh, so now I'm coming to know about your work and how amazing it is. So I'm very grateful um, for this platform. Yes, and so do you have? Uh, you. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, keep going. I, I will just. It's a little glitch. Oh, I'm just yeah, going to say I, we're going to end this show very soon. Do you have any um, last words that you'd like to share with listeners? Um, I want the listener to check out my website. Go to kindofplay. dot com, and I would. Yeah, if we could talk offline, if I could put, make a, any specific content for your audience, I would love to share it because, you know, I think the technology is magic. So let's let's get the content out there so more people get to at least see it and, and, and experience it and try it for themselves. 
And I really, and, and I just want to say thank you for doing your work and doing it in such a challenging um, cultural, you know, and re religious, you know, restriction. So, so thank you for being you. Thank you. And thank you for being you. And thank you for coming on to today's show. So, so for those of you out there, remember his website, I've mentioned a few times, is kennethblade.com. You can subscribe to it, get his free content. And he is on Twitter. That's Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Blade also. And um, his Facebook is Kenneth Play Page. And um, Kenneth's uh, projects has been featured in Playboy, New York Magazine, Huffington Post, Trillist, Refinery29, and uh, Cosmopolitan. He's definitely somebody who is going places and doing amazing work, and you definitely want to check it out. And next week, I have my friend Bianca, and she is uh, wanting to talk about um, dementia. And so it's going to be interesting to be talking about sexuality with people who have um, difficulties remembering um, the past and uh, even the present. So stay tuned to Arrow's Evolution. This is where sex and spirit meet. And I love all of you and I want you to own your sexuality and uh, have great sex this week. Goodbye.